Hi and welcome to Little Bits Honey Bees. I'm the Skinny Bee Man. This is a follow up on these totes. I've caught a lot of heck over it. We're going to go into some detail on this. But a couple things I forgot to tell you. I want you to look here. This is the mount. Of course there's some live bees there, but there's some dead ones. If you're getting more dead bees than this in a tote, see there's hardly any dead bees in these totes. These totes was filled up at 9 o'clock this morning. It's 3 o'clock now. And they're empty. They're dead dry. But if, if you've got more dead bees than that in there, you don't have enough totes out. The bees are flogging it. Too many bees on the mat, and they're sinking the mat down, and they're drowning bees. So if you're getting more dead bees than that, you need to put more totes out. That's, uh, on Monday, I've been feeding four totes all summer with this amount of dead bees. And these are old bees. You're going to have some attrition, no matter how you feed or whatever. They're just old bees, the foragers. But anyway, Monday I come out here. Actually, it was Sunday. Sunday. And there was about a quarter pound of dead bees in each box. So I went to five totes instead of four problem solved but if you're getting more dead bees than that you need to change the mats now we're going to go into some depth on uh, uh, open feeding versus no feeding versus hive top feeding in a dearth now we're talking in a dearth situation and we're going I'm going up here and sit down and do the talk but here, I just want to show you some of these hives. They've took down 25 gallons of syrup today. The vent hoses in the side of the boxes. You don't see scout bees looking on these hives to rob. They're all doing their thing. They're peaceful. Absolutely no scout bees. That's just a point I want to make. Now I'm going to go sit down. At least I'm comfortable now. I've caught a lot of flack over the last video about the open feeding, spreading disease, and this, that, and the other. Have no scientific proof to back this up. But let's use let's use a little common sense on this. Okay, say that I wasn't open feeding, not feeding at all. It's in the dearth. The bees are stressed, and when you got stressed bees that opens the door for uh, disease. It's just, it's just part of, the, part of like you. If you're stressed, you're susceptible for diabetes and, and high blood pressure, heart attacks, whatever. When bees are stressed, they're, they're like that. And I'm not feeding. Say your neighbor half mile down the road has got a bunch of bees that's got EFB, American, um, European fowl brood. And you're not feeding. Your bee, their their weak hives. They're not defending the hive good. So all your bees is flying down to your neighbors and robbing his hives out, bringing the AF the EFB back to your to your your yard. Okay, that's just a point I want to make. Common sense. I mean, if 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 it's in a dearth, and the bees are hungry, they're gonna they're gonna rob. They're just, they're just, that's their nature. They're gonna survive any way they can. On that scenario, I'm open feeding. I'm keeping my bees mainly in my yard. So I'm not having to worry about it going down to the neighbors and robbing. You've seen they drunk 25 gallons of uh, syrup today. And uh, we just walked down through the yard there. They're, there's no robbers. They're all content. They've got enough sugar stores for the day that they're content. They'll go out and work a little bit of flowers and stuff that's around now but they're content so I'm keeping the bees in my yard where I've got control you should be looking in your hive you ought to know if you've got sick bees if you've got sick bees take care of it treat them or get rid of them so 
I shouldn't be spreading any disease. Your EFB, there's treatments for EFB, and I'll catch a lot of flack over this, but there's treatment now that will take care of American fowl brood. The University, uh, BYU University has a product out called Brood Safe that's been proven to get rid of the, the American fowl brood. Uh, that's not been well published, it's not, but they do have it, and it, and it does, they've proven that it's worked, scientific proof. Uh, Nozema, uh, you, got, you can see the signs of it most of the time, but not all the time. Uh, but know that your bees are healthy. Take care of your bees. It's just like livestock. If you got, you got horses out there and uh, you got one that's quit eating, you know he's sick. That's the same way. If you've got a hive out there that's not brooding up, not laying any brood. Something's wrong. Uh, you look in there for uh, uh, brood paralysis. That's when the, the, the larva is corkscrewed up, standing up straight in the hive. Uh, you treat it. Uh, of course, EFB, you know, you get the little brown larva down in the cups. AFB, you get the sunken caps. AFB, doesn't, you can't see that till after it's capped. It's a later stage like that. Nozema, you know, if you got the, uh, where they're crapping all over the front of the hive, uh, that's a good sign they got nozema. Uh, know your bees. Take care of them. So, therefore, if I'm feeding, my bees are not robbing. They're not even robbing in my yard. So that gives me a chance to get through, more time to get through the hives and find some uh, a hive that something's wrong with it. So I'm contending that I, I spread less disease with, uh, with the open feeding. Just by I'm keeping my bees in my yard, I know what my bees are, the health of them, I keep them healthy, and it gives me time to find a, a sick hive. And let's go another aspect, hive top feeding or, in, or frame feeder feeding inside the hive instead of the, the open feed. I, I hive top feed in the spring for a specific reason. The temperature's cool, a lot of times it's raining and they can't get out and forage and once they start brooding up in the spring and they got six days it rains, they'll cannibalize the brood and they've used a lot of their winter resources to uh, protein to go into that brood cycle and you've lost it. It's set your bees way back. So once they start brooding in the spring, you've got to keep feed food on them, protein and carbohydrates on top of the hive. I'm a believer in that. But back to the point, say, say a open or hive top feeding or frame feeding. If you're frame feeding, you've got a chance that the queen gets down in the frame feeder and drowns. And you've always got one hive, you fill a frame feeder up or a hive top feeder, and you fill one of them all the way up, and the next day, one hive's got it empty. The next hive not hardly touched it. Well, if you're not real careful in, in watching things, you're going to have that the sugar water ferment in there and cause problems, make your bees sick. Yeah, hive top feeders is notorious and frame feeders too, is notorious for getting nasty. I mean, if you don't take them out and, and bleach them, at least every two weeks, it, they're gonna get slimy, nasty looking. And uh, with the totes, I bleach them out once a week. And you see right now, they, they was, that syrup was put out there at nine o'clock, at three o'clock in the afternoon, it's totally dry. Uh, if on pretty days, I leave the lids off of them so the sun dries the mats out. No chance of a, a, a mold or mildew. I get them out, I, ch I wash them out once a week with bleach water, clean them all up, put them all back. So uh, everybody's got their own opinion, no scientific proof, but I'm gonna tell you, a lot of scientific things you read in, in books are not true. I'm gonna give you one for instance. Uh, the, the, the books, how many books you guys read that a queen lays 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a day? 
That's absolutely bull hockey. How can you have a hive that's got six, eight, eight frames of cat brood in it? That's mathematically impossible if the only thing she lays is 1,500 to 2,000 eggs a day. There's roughly 7,000 uh, cells she can lay in on a frame if they're good frames. Just do the math. And they hatch out in 21 days. She can't have seven, six, seven, eight frames of cat brood in a hive if all she lays is 1,500, 2,000 eggs a day. A queen lays the amount of eggs that the hive can support. If they, she got tons of nurse bees and that, that hive's packing, I've seen them, seen her lay a frame and a half of, a frame, well, a good frame, both sides of eggs in one day. That's 7,000. So, you know, they, you can talk about all you want. Uh, this is real world, and with a little bit of common sense, uh, and I'll catch some flack on this, and I'm good with that. Uh, this is how I feed, this is how I'm going to continue to feed. If I fed hive top feeders all summer long, it would take me three and a half to four hours a day to feed every day. I go out there and dump, dump five five gallon buckets of syrup in that in 15 minutes in the morning I'm done with the feed. You got, it's got, you, commercially or whatever you got you got to think about your time. And there again if you hive top feed some hives won't take it like the others and if you're just feeding them a certain amount on a hive top feeder and they're, they're not satisfied with what they've got you've got a hive over here that's uh, uh, not taking much They'll go in and they'll rob that hive out. So in the, in the summertime, I don't feed hive inside the hive or on top of the hive. Um, a lot of this in my opinion, but I've been raising bees for a while, and I have no trouble with the disease, and, and I keep it contained pretty much to my yard. And, and you, the best I can, best I can do. Hope you enjoy the video. Hope you learn something. Hope you think about something. Just, just not everything you read is, is the fact. They may say it is, but uh, a lot of these people who write these books never raised bees in their life. You got, you got to talk to somebody that raises bees. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.